Welcome to Ultimate DIY, where you learn to be your own handyman, and today we're going to replace this Kohler Flush Canister. So chances are you've tuned into this particular episode on Ultimate DIYer because you don't know how to replace this canister and you're having some kind of an issue. Now there is a defect on these and I'm going to go over that in a second, but let me explain to you a little bit about how it works. All right, so let's get into some of the nuts and bolts of how these systems work. Your traditional systems, even this system, they still use a flush valve. Now the flush valve is separate from the flush canister or the flush flapper. What that valve does is when the water level drops in there because you open up either your flapper or the canister with the chain connected to your handle, the water will start dropping in to your tank through the hole or the opening. And when it does that on your flush valve, the float drops. And when that thing drops to a certain level, it kicks on the water coming out of the wall and into your toilet and it fills your tank back up. So in the traditional flappers, the flappers would raise up when you raise, pull the handle. And as the water starts dropping and filling into your bowl, as it gets lower in the tank, that little flapper would actually close the opening again, and it would allow your toilet to fill back up from the flush valve. What this one does is basically the same thing. You are going to take the chain, it's going to be hooked to your handle, you pull it, it raises this up, and by doing that, it opens this area up. And by opening that area up, it allows water to rush into the, the uh, bowl and flush your actual bowl. And as the water drops, it starts slowly closing and it closes back. Now, this is one other area in these valves where you can have a problem, which is just like a, a uh, flush flapper or a flapper is it will these little gaskets this gasket can be replaced well this gasket over time may get wore out brittle get hard and it does not want to work any longer and so it allows water to seep in around this opening and you hear a constant little water running so that's the one one other thing that you can replace on this if you're having an issue but most of the time we're having an issue with this disc this is an actual broken unit and i wanted to bring this so you could see this up close but the broken unit, there's usually a barbed fitting right here at the end that's all one piece. It's connected to the, the plastic. This one has been broken off. That barbed fitting is made to come from your flush valve. So when you flush and that, the, its float gets so low, it starts shooting water in and filling your tank back up. Well, it goes through a little hose and goes to the top of this valve and inside of here. Fills up this whole canister so it's ready to go. So the next time you pull your handle and open it, it's going to shoot a big burst of water into your bowl to flush it. Well, if you notice, this thing rises quite a bit. It's, I mean, really a long way. And what it does is it actually, over time, it busts that piece off. Because that barbed fitting holds the rubber hose onto this piece very, very firmly. So as you keep banging it, it's not pulling the hose off. It's just going to ultimately crack the plastic all the way around, and that whole piece breaks off. Now, you may be saying, well, why don't I put a better hose, longer hose, a little more flexible? You can do that, but if you really look at this, when you pull it, it actually goes almost to the top of your lid already, so you have very little room there to be able to work with. You may be able to get a little bit softer hose, might last a little longer. This is a problem that Kohler has that they're going to end up ultimately having to address. So, how do you get it off? You say, you know, you're looking at it, it looks scary, you lifted that lid off, and you're like, oh my gosh, I, I just don't think I can do this. I'm going to have to call a plumber. Let me tell you, super quick, literally 60 seconds, I can have this off and have the new one on. But before I actually show you how you do that, one other thing I want to point out is when you go to get this, you're going to walk into the big box store, they don't have these usually on the shelf. Very few stores I've found, especially big box stores, are carrying them yet. You'll see a ton of the flapper valves, and I'll show you a little video of some of that, probably one of my shoulders, where they've got just a ton of them. 
They, you will see one in most stores that's made by Everready, and it's usually for a Glacier Bay toilet. It looks like this, but it has another unit that comes up, which is basically its flushing mechanism. And that's the one that's supposed to be, you've probably seen them built into the, the uh, toilet lids, and it's got a number one for liquids, a number two for, obviously, number two. No pun intended. But that's a whole different unit. does not work here. I'll show you at the very end of this video how you read your model number inside your tank so that you can order the correct one. You'll either order it generally from any of the big box stores, online services, or you can go on and work with those. They'll be able to get you a lot of things they don't stock in the store. You can also order it on Amazon, which is, I believe, where I've got the one that I'm putting in today. And you can also uh, go to your, any of your big plumbing stores, and they're going to have them, and you can order But you have to have that model number to do it. But anyway, so how this works, there's two ways. If you read your instructions on it, they're going to tell you, basically, the first thing you do is shut off your water, reach over, unclip your chain from your handle, and then if your line is still hooked up, say you're just replacing the gasket, you will literally uh, undo that line and set it aside. If it's broken, obviously, you don't have to undo it. It's already done. So there's two ways you can do it. You can reach over and you can turn the top yellow disc and you can turn it back a quarter of a turn. I think the reason they don't recommend that is some people can be a little over aggressive and probably break the unit on the top if you turn it too hard. But you can also raise this up, which is what they tell you to do. This whole piece is screwed into the bottom. It's going to stay. Reach down and grab the neck, and all you do is turn it counterclockwise a quarter turn, and it comes off. So this is where it's kind of frustrating. You're paying $20, $25 for this unit when really, really all you needed was the top disc, which they don't make that removable. Or if they do, they don't give you the part. Then second, you can just use this great part and you're great and good to go. That's all you need. But they make you buy the whole thing and you end up generally trashing this thing or just setting it somewhere for a rainy day. So when I first get my unit in, and it comes to me in the mail. It's going to be put together just like so. So the very first thing I'm going to do is unwrap my unit. I'm going to reach down and I'm going to open this up. I'm going to turn it here. Counterclockwise quarter turn. Pull it off. Set this aside. This is what I need. I'm going to put this back in the box. Save it for later. Whatever you want to do with it. Then I'm going to go into the room. And I'm going to turn off the water to my toilet. I'm going to reach up inside. You know, take the lid off. Reach inside. Take the chain. Unhook it. Make sure my hose is undone. I'm going to reach down, turn it, pull the unit off. Set the old unit off to the side. I'm going to reach over, grab the new unit. This stays in place. I don't do anything with it. Take the new unit. I'm going to put it on, put it down, turn my clockwise counter, hook up my chain, put my new hose back on. Now, if your hose tip is broke off in your old hose and you're trying to use that hose, you may need a pair of needle nose pliers just to get that little tip out of there so that you can put your hose back. Other than that, you really don't need any tools. Super simple. So get that hose back on, reach over, turn my water on, set me on, turn it on, make sure that everything's flushing. You shouldn't even have to make any adjustments. It should be perfect just the way it was. Make sure it's flushing good, everything's working good, put your lid back on and you're in business. Literally 60 seconds, maybe even less if you're really fast. You've watched this video a couple times and you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, it's still going to be really quick. So all of that is super simple, super fast. Now, let me show you a close-up a little bit of how this looks. So the piece that goes into the part that stays is simply a little uh, stem, and it's got two wings on the sides, just like that. The part that it's going to go into, this is the part that's going down into your tank and the water flushes through. And all it is, is it's got the same stem opening with the wings. So you are going to take that stem and place it inside of it. And you're just going to turn it. And like I said, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can reach down here if you don't want to twist on that and just turn it here. It comes out super easy. So nothing to it. Very simple. So you should be able to do that yourself. Any handyman, any any homeowner should be able to. You don't even have to own a tool, and you can take care of that. I'll show, like to go ahead and stay tuned to the end so you can see how I read the model number. But if you've gotten anything out of today's video, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, leave me a comment. If you have a question and you didn't quite understand something, leave me a comment, and I'll do my best to answer it for you or get you the answer. 
Also, be sure you, when you do subscribe, hit the little bell notification button because that's going to let you know about all the upcoming videos as they come out. And right now, I'm releasing anywhere from two to four videos a week as long as my work schedule allows. So I do appreciate you watching and I hope to see you guys on the next one. So this is your model number though that you need. It tells you on the bottom the gallons, which is 1.28, pretty standard today. Um, and it's going to tell you at the top your model number, it, this 974166-CS-B, and I believe that is a B as well, BB. The thing that you're really focused on though are going to be not the 97, but this 4166. That's going to be the number that you've got to look up because those numbers can be a, a 42 something. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of numbers. So you're going to focus. I would enter the whole thing, but focus specifically. Make sure that you get it to fit those four digits, the 4166.